Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm writer coach Tony and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm back to vlogging again. It's Monday and it's vlogging day. I've decided to leave one day just for vlogging because my schedule is so full that uh, a weeks go by without me doing any output. So finally today I decided to leave Monday as my vlogging day so I can produce at least a few videos, a few vlogs every day. I mean, a few vlogs for my for my channel, Writer Coach Tony. So today I'm going to answer a few questions from some of my people, uh, some of the people who write to me in the channel. Uh, today I have a question from Paulina Varias. She sent me her review of related literature her uh, lit, lit review and then she was asking me if uh, coach pwede po ba ang ganitong RRL so I, I won't, I'm not sure the RRL to you but um, on first glance um, ano naman siya um, the RRL has meat no? um, however uh if you look at it, uh, the, any experienced teacher could see that uh, it's just been copied and it's just copied and pasted, no? Which is a big no-no in research because you're supposed to write them in your own words, understand them, and then relate them to your to your study. So anyway, I have a few tips for our. Our question of the day for Paulina Varias. Okay, so Paulina, um, yeah, you did the research. Um, so, pwede na to, but this is like 20 points out of 100. So, the next step is to, you no, know, because the first thing when you do research, you can actually just copy and paste mo na lahat, no? Um, then make sure that you copy the source correctly so in her case she did not put uh the sources no she, she doesn't have a bibliography so i think it's very important that when you're doing your research you also write the bibliography no? it's either the reference page or the bibliography so sabayin silang dalawa para when you finally choose and edit the final uh journal articles or whatever literature you want to include in your study um, you won't have a hard time looking for it in the internet once again no? uh, in other words parang two birds with one stone you have the text already and then you also have the the source where you got it no? so my first comment is number one um, yeah avoid plagiarizing number one <laughs> in most universities abroad no in most my clients there um, 10% is acceptable level of plagiarism, which is uh, uh, very low naturally, but, but they're very strict. If it goes higher than 10%, they will, they will um, return your paper to you, and then you'll have to scale it down below 10%. But, and how do you do it? It's, um, there are many tools no, uh, online that you can use uh, for for plagiarism first is um, uh, thesaurus thesaurus.com you can look for similar words to the words uh, in the paper and then you can use passive active voice no so if it's written in active voice write it in passive voice uh, what do I mean for example um, let's say um, the name of the dog, uh, my dog's name is Cooper. My dog's name is Cooper. So, if I make it, uh, ko kusha, no, passive to active, it's, uh, Cooper is the name of my dog. No? So, in other words, it's the same idea, you just flip it, no? Um, kasi sa active, let's say, um, the boy is running. The boy, uh, the boy, uh, no. The police runs after the thief. No. Uh, so let's see. If we make it that passive, um, the thief was running away from the police. So 
you just in other words you just flip it no uh, when you make it passive voice um, the linking verbs come out the is the was where are plus the ing now when you do passive to active I don't know active to passive but when you do the opposite way yeah so in other words um, you have to reword your your paper uh, what I do I just read over it and then I understand it and then I write it in my own words that's how I do it um, yeah so what you do is maybe you read 10 sentences and try to understand what it really means and then you rewrite it in your own words it will save you a lot of trouble and it will make you more respectable to your teacher you know, because um, anyone who plagiarizes actually you'll you might get expelled no? or you might get suspended or your teacher will say oh god this this student is a cheat no so as much as possible um, plagiarism is, is a big no-no and uh, how do teachers know if it's plagiarized since we've been reading and reading papers almost all our lives we can we can really easily spot students who plagiarize because you know um, you're our students and we know how you write now before before you write wrote a thesis you are you've been writing for us in essays and exams so we know what you are capable of so if your grammar becomes a bit sophisticated and you're using words which are highfalutin words uh, that's a red flag um, it's actually very easy to spot plagiarism no? if I see a very elegantly con cons uh, constructed sentence I just copy paste it I put it in Google and then whatever text you came you borrowed it from it will come out so you know when that happens I just leave a note for the student and say uh, I think you have to uh, rewrite your work using your own words no? so Although there are um, Turnitin and other programs now which can scientifically measure the plagiarism, no. But in my case, since um, we don't have the technology in the school I am teaching, um, we just use, yeah, uh, detective work, no, to find out if the student is plagiarizing or not. So again, please do not plagiarize, no. Do not. You have to reword everything. Um, because we know your level of English and we also want to know if you understood what you were reading so that's number one no, for the for the RRL that you did number two uh, the RRLs in the Philippines follow a certain outline um, usually for education majors they follow the um, local literature um, foreign literature local um, what's that studies and then uh, foreign studies then they put a synthesis in the end no? or sometimes you can also do the synthesis uh, within the topic no what I usually prefer actually is I do it by topic you know uh, because you read so many so much information um, when you edit your work, you do it by topic na. So you put a topic title, um, and then sometimes I merge the two, no? Um, for example, I put foreign studies, and then I get the gist of the the topic of what I'm talking about, and that will be the title, and then I put the the content there. Uh, the reason for that is it will make the the, uh, the life of your teacher much easier. No, um, because nakita na kagad nila yung topic mo. So, I mean, uh, you have a topic, right, for your thesis. Then you have subtopics. No? So, what I, what you don't have here is you don't have subtopics. So, you, you have to put subtopics uh, and then maybe 10, ten sentences. Another subtopic, 10 sentences, like that. No? Uh, make it, make the, uh, the life of your teacher much easier so that they can easily grasp what you are what you want to talk about what you want to research or what has been done on the topic that you've been researching um, I also strongly suggest that you synthesize it no? synthesize means um, just relate 
your topic, uh, the findings of whatever you found out in your lit review related to your topic. No? For example, let's say, I, I don't know what your, Pauline, uh, what's your title again? I forgot. Let's see. I can out oh, here. Uh huh. Oh, because you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, for example, you just you just um, you just uh, related to your topic. For example, um, your topic is um, student participation during online learning in your school. So since online learning is happening all over the world, you will find many studies, let's say from Sweden, you know, online learning and how students are satisfied with the with the process of online learning. So you can you do that but what you're doing is you're presenting the results of the studies done in Sweden. And then you say, Oh, in Sweden this is what happened. This is the this is the findings of this study. Hopefully in my study, in my hypothesis I said that this variables this factor of students in online learning. In other words, um this lit review that you're doing, the ideas you're getting there, um, is helping shape your study. So because you're deciding what variables to use uh, for your study, and then um, you're comparing it also with the results uh, of those variables from other countries. Uh, I guess that's, that's the advantage in using quantitative analysis. No? It allows you to compare results over over different uh, respondents over different countries you can also vary the respondents no for example in the Swedish Swede, in the Swedish study um, it can be college students in your case you're doing high school students so um, same 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 topic but different set of respondents so that can also be you can use that and you can synthesize that in your uh, review of related literature. So again, number one, do not plagiarize. Number two, put subtopics. No. Um, number three, uh, yeah, I like what you did. You already placed the the references. Now you were, um, what do you call this? Um, yeah, putting the references. Uh, footnoting. Sorry, you have to footnote immediately. Uh, and so the the rule is any idea which is not yours, you footnote it. You know? So, in this case, I think you're using Harvard. No, you put the uh, yeah. Anyway, in online there are many guides using referencing. Your university will tell you what referencing you should use. You study the format and then you use it in your lit review. The lit review will have the most number of footnoting and referencing. Because that's the part where you really research, you know? So in your case, you already have the reference, uh, the footnoting. What you do now would be to reference it by placing all of these uh, sources in a bibliography, you know? and As I said a while ago, um, here in the Philippines, they have the rules normally five foreign studies, five foreign literature, five local studies, and five uh, local literature. So the studies normally it's all journal studies, no, or if it's local studies, it's all the thesis that that has been done, um, which maybe you can use the ones from your own university. Um, for the literature, it can be a book, it can be a magazine article, uh, presentation in a conference, etc., etc. No, so um, in my case, I prefer when you footnote it, uh, when you write the references for that, you put it by book. Um, journal article, um, conference paper, like that. No? Uh, so it's easier for me to check where you got your sources. No? Um, okay, so that's three already. Um, I think number four is make it coherent. No? Um, do, do when you're writing, when you're uh, editing in the beginning, you uh, in my case, it's... Um, I just put the subtitles first. Second step is I make it coherent, no? 
because um, in your paper uh, you'll have uh, variables which are more important than some other variables no especially if they're the independent and the independent and the dependent variables especially the dependent variables because um, the dependent variables um, the results would depend on how the the independent variables affect them no so for example if there's more rain then there'll be flooding if there's more rain there'll be more water in the dam so in other words um, the independent variable which is the rain amount of rainfall will affect many uh, dependent variables like level of flooding level of water in the dam etc etc so same in this case no when you're writing your your um, lit review make sure that there's a flow to it no usually there's a very short introduction and then you introduce um, usually I put like a background of the study type of lit review uh, just to give the everyone who's reading everyone who's reading it a background of the of the study before I delve into the the nitty gritty you no know? um, and you do it by topic and in the end you can put a very small conclusion also maybe just five sentences no? um, how these studies how these information that you choose can benefit your your research no? or has benefited your research so in your case um, Paulina the the RRL you used can be improved no um, with the suggestions I asked I told I, mean, I told you right now I think number five would be to use proper font no the presentation is very important no uh, 12 font size usually Verdana or Arial double spaced and then justified right justified uh, make it neat and clean so that your teacher not have a hard time reading it no because the one you sent me it's Calibri 11 uh, not even justified not even double space so yeah it's, it could, it's a headache to to check and you know what happens to your grade when your teacher gets a headache from your work no your your grade will be a headache as well so make sure uh, even the pre even the presentation is very good so let's recap um, how to improve the review of later literature of Pauline of Paulina Varias, number one, don't plagiarize, no? use your own words. Number two, um, what's my number two? Uh, use your, use topic topic titles. No? Um, then number three, uh, make it coherent. Number four, uh, your referencing and footnoting, very important. And then number five, the presentation of your work. No? Uh, if it's Verdana or Arial 12, write justified double space to make it look neat. So with that, I hope, uh, anyway, if you have any questions regarding regarding uh, this video, please feel free to, to write to me directly through my email or through my other social media.